Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Today we're back here with the 20 watt Class A amp. Uh, we're, we're getting real close to wrapping this up. And one of the things that happened was I got these new op amps. I just want to talk about this for just a moment here. Uh, and then I'm going to bring you over here and show you what, you know, if anything they'll do for us. Now, originally the NE5532 op amps in here that will go up to plus or minus 22 volts, they were only getting 15 volts from the uh, power supply that feeds the op amp, plus or minus 15 volts. So I bumped it up to with a 22 volt Zener diode so I could get plus or minus 22. So with the voltage drop after the regulator circuit, it's about 21 and a half volts roughly. And we can get just barely 20 watts now, just right, right there. So uh, at one time I thought, well, order these Burr Brown parts, these OPA 2604s. These things will go up 25 volts, so you get another few volts per rail if you run them at max. And I thought, well, at one time I was going to do it. It took them forever to get to me. So I finally got them. And at this point, I would have to, if I change that power supply again to 25 volts, these uh, capacitors here for the regulator circuit, uh, they're only rated at 25. So then we'd be running them right at their max rating. That's not a good idea with aluminum electrolytics. So I'd have to swap those out. So right now I'm kind of thinking, I don't know if I want to go that trouble plus then I'd have to analyze the rest of the circuitry to make sure that I don't need to change some resistor values some other things it could just have a domino effect that I could end up having to change a lot of parts but what I thought is well what the heck these parts they're they're like you know if you go to a distributor and buy them in single quantities they're around five bucks a piece they're over four dollars at least the any 5532 is like under a dollar so you know I mean sounds like they should be a better part right well and from specifications you know most of the specs not all the specs they do sound like a better part they also have a JFET input instead of bipolar which you know a FET input some people like that better so anyway uh, I want to try them out I want to just do a side by side see if there's any benefit going to them and since I got them in why not so let's jump over here and take a look okay all right for the setup we got the mix sig uh, CP 2100 B for the current probe looking at the current going into the 8 ohm load the 200 watt load and then we have this uh, Pentec the DP 25 differential probes connected over here looking at the output voltage okay and then I also have the THD generator right here, coming over here, looking at the output as well. And then over here, we have the unity generator. We'll be putting in the sine wave, and we'll use the heel key to look at the DC voltage on the op amp. And then right up here, we have our Mixig uh, oscilloscope that we'll be using for this test. Okay, so what I did is I changed these zener diodes in here to get the uh, pretty close to max amplitude I can get out of this NE5532. And it went to Amazon, bought this uh, zener diode kit. I'll put the link down below. This is a pretty nice little kit. You can see how many zener di diodes it has in there. It's a pretty nice little kit. So I'll put the link down below on how much uh, cost or it cost me at the now time. What I want to do is show you how many uh, volts we have on the plus or minus rail so you can hear the power spike turn on safety first got to put my glasses on all right now you hear the voltage up on my power supply i, I max out the rails at 31 uh plus minus 31.6 so here let me just show you what i have here on the op amp 21.55 and by the way it takes a minute to uh charge up these all these uh large uh caps right here on the power supply okay let me go to the other pin okay so minus 21.58 Go back here and plus 21.58. So like I said, it takes a little while for these uh, power supplies to charge up and, and steady themselves. 
All right, so what I notice, if I drop my power supply down to 30 volts, I actually lose a couple, few tenths of a volt here. So uh, even though I didn't really see any THD change until about 29 volts, uh, I do see a little bit of voltage change on the op amp. So that's interesting. All right, so with full signal coming out, I think it's pretty close to full amplitude before distortion. I mean, before we start to clip and stuff, we got 0.03% distortion, and a lot of that's the, the generator itself. But 21.49 at plus minus 29, so it looks like I have to go to 30 volts so that I don't see a voltage change on my op amp. 21.56 or 57, I think it actually, like say, once you change the amplitude, it takes just a moment for it to charge up. There we go, 21 point. Yeah, so that's the max. So plus minus 30 volts, we don't affect the voltage here. It looks like actually it's 365 millivolts that we get max amplitude before distortion. So 0.03%. And that's what the signal looks like. One kilohertz, we got one K here. It's kind of hard to read that here. Let me just shrink the waveform down just a touch just so you can read the values. So we're right at 13 volts RMS. That's pretty good. And 1.57 amps RMS at one kilohertz. All right, guys, that is the bag that this part came in. And what we do, I just make sure they're lined up, that there's no bent pins. And then I put one row in, make sure they're lined up, and then watch the other one, just use my fingernail Make sure they're all straight and then just push in. All right, and you can see the NE5532 in there. And then just popping that thing out carefully. Oops, there we go. Magnetic screwdrivers are awesome. And you can see how the socket is actually made with uh, what we call machine sockets. They're just round, you know, nice barrels. Uh, gold, I think they're gold-plated. Um, unlike some of the less expensive ones that are more of a leaf spring that just push in two sides. So this is the, the nice type of sockets back in the days we'd use them for military stuff. And that's what it looks like installed. The Burr Brown part. It's the OPA 2604. All right, with the new chip in, uh, the voltage up to plus minus 30 volts. Okay, that's interesting. 21.65. That's actually above the 21.58 we saw before. So the only thing I could guess is this chip's taking less power. So it's not pulling the voltage down as much. That's really interesting, actually. Here, I'm going to increase the voltage drills up to 31.6 just to see if it affects that where it didn't on the other chip I mean yeah with the other chip in wow it does holy cow 21.8 volts okay that's really interesting that you know that should give us uh, more output all right I'll bring the signal up to 365 millivolts where we had it before okay there we are and we're same place we did you know, that's where we were before. Same current, same voltage. Okay, now let's see if I can just bring this up any higher. Maybe this chip takes less headroom so we can get more voltage out. So 0.03% distortion again. Okay, going a little bit higher. Okay, so I've got the input up to 388 millivolts and now we're at 13.9. I'll just capture that. And we're still about the same THD, so that is pretty darn good. All right, guys, I have this uh, running again. You can see the green line on. Uh, what I did is I still get the same voltage out, same distortion, and I lowered the power supply rail down to 29 volts, plus minus 29. So, yeah, even though it affects the op amp, uh, the... We, it doesn't seem to affect our distortion or our max signal before clipping. All right, so this signal gives us about 22.97 watts, so almost 23 watts 
versus the 20.28 uh, with the other op amp. So, heck, it, that's over 11% improvement by just changing the op amp. Well, you know what? I think I'm going to go ahead and use them. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to go to trouble to try to push up the power supply. Uh, it looks like now we can get, I mean, that gave almost 12% more power, le over 11% at least. So, you know, and with the JFIT inputs, you know, like the data sheets say, well, they're supposed to be more like a tube amp. Uh, versus the bipolar amplifiers. They're supposed to give more even order harmonics, which, I mean, I think some people believe that's why they sound better, like tubes do, uh, but I don't know. You know, they cost some money. I got them, finally, after a long time, and I think I'll just go ahead and use them. I get a little more power. Why not? <laughs> all right, what do you guys think of all this stuff? Uh, let me know what you think. Give me some comments and all that. And we're going to pump out some more videos real quick. Sorry, I've been really busy at work. And I've been kind of slow at the videos. So I've got a bunch of reviews to do. And i got some giveaways to do too. So, uh, all right. Hey, thanks for watching. And thanks to all my patrons for all the support. Really appreciate it. And appreciate all you guys watching the videos too. And, uh, hey, I'll see you next time.